Are you wondering if you should engage with somebody, engage sexually, intimately with somebody who either didn't get the jab, if you got it, or got the jab, but you didn't? Just to make this very clear, I'm not talking from a medical perspective. I'm not a physician in any way. I'm not here to give medical advice. I'm looking at the philosophical, spiritual, energetic topic. And that's why it's included in the sexual energy discussion. Hi, this is Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach. Welcome back to my channel. Here, I help you get your orgasmic intimacy. So why do I include this topic in the energy and philosophy um, playlist and section? First of all, the medical component, I think it's to be addressed with specialized physicians, Definitely not one, totally not going to give my opinion on something that I'm not trained in. When it comes to, you know, taking care of your health, there are many resources out there and I totally encourage you to go and take care of your health. I, for one, am somebody that got two jabs. I followed the procedure here. I wanted to be, you know, I, I followed it for my own particular reasons. And now that I'm hearing the health aftermath some people do have negative side effects after and they're they're starting to show up i am following that topic i'm taking care of my health there are many procedures that i'm doing and i'm also getting psychological spiritual support as i'm navigating this period i didn't have any side effects the reason the my mindset is i don't want to have them so i want to take care of my health as much as i can to prevent anything that I hear that some people are getting as side effects. So I want to put this perspective out there because I want you to know where I'm coming from with this discussion. There is an Instagram account that I follow and that is Archer Love. I'm going to put him on screen here so you can see him. And in a story from a day ago, I actually, somebody brought to him this discussion and I'm going to show you the story on screen. So you're looking at it right now and in the lower with the gray background is the question and the dark black background is Archer's answer. So I'm going to read them. Archer, this might be a weird question but I respect how you view things philosophically. Curious to know your thoughts on engaging in sexual relations with people who got injected when you yourself did not. And here's Archer Love's answer. Hey, look. Life is short, and when it comes to love, sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. Just meaningless, casual sex, maybe not worth wavering your personal beliefs for, but if you really love someone, life is short, and in the end, we all die anyway. <laughs> yeah, talk about philosophy, this is the truth. In a philosophical sense, we all die anyway. So, um, I find that, that, that he's not saying, you know, just don't care about your health at all. He's saying that in the end, you know, you got to remember everybody's due to transition to another place. I do believe we have a soul. I do believe we have an afterlife. And I believe whatever we've amassed here, we don't take away with us. So the people that we meet, the lessons that we learned, the experiences that we have, those can sometimes enrich our soul and help us understand, get wiser, and, and you know, move on to the other place in a whole, wholesome way. Uh, my view here is influenced by Taoism. You all know that, uh, or some of you that have watched some of my videos have heard me speak that I, after I got my abusive interaction, I sought many spiritual paths, and then I stuck with Tai Chi, you know, a Taoist practice, and... Um, when it comes to the women's practices, I use the jade egg from the Taoist perspective. I use the preparation, preparatory practices, non-aroused sexual practices, okay? There are several. And I use them also in my work. Now, their perspective on the soul, and I want to include this here. What does this have to do with sex? Well, my view is that you go for deep dive intimacy, okay? Deep, profound intimacy. And you also engage on an er energetic and spiritual level. And from my perspective, it does make sense that you interact with people who are on the same page as you. 
view things in a similar way. So, that being said, Taoism believes that if you work on yourself energetically, you have an energetic embryo that starts to amass in your womb, the Dantian, if you know the center from Taoism, Tai Chi, or Qigong also. And as you keep, you, you stay with your practice, this energetic embryo is going to grow into a fetus, and then a child, and an adolescent, and then an adult. So your entire energy being will have matured. And when you die, you consciously, there's, it's a conscious passing, basically. So you, your soul is matured, and it consciously moves on to the next level in a wholesome way. The Taoist, as I've heard it from a, Tao, from a Tai Chi teacher, not the one that I studied with for many years, but a different teacher, uh, she told me that in, if the soul is not yet integrated, it's just like in nature. Your energy will dissipate into all sorts of places, be reused, much like we see in nature. When a tree dies, when an animal dies, the nature starts to recycle it. Okay, that's the natural way of doing things. That's what happens to everything that is alive and then is no longer alive. Nature will recycle it. Okay? That's how it's always been. So, from an energetic perspective, that's my take. That's why, since I've started doing personal growth, and on a secondary plane, I never talked about this a lot, the spiritual path. I was on it. I was not comfortable to talk about it. I was on it for sure. I do want to engage with people that even if they don't do the practices themselves, they at least understand and respect me and support me in my path. Yeah, I don't ask people to necessarily walk on the same path as I'm walking. I will honor and respect other people's paths. And if I find compatibility, I will walk with them, whether it's friends, whether it's intimate partners, Nowadays, I'm only considering of, you know, a life partner. I'm not so much into casual stuff. Totally respect the people that do that, and they are okay with that. So, to come back to this question, from a medical perspective, if somebody took the jab, it's not like you're going to get whatever they got through the jab. So, the jab is not contagious. Okay? That let's start, you know, it, the, the jab acts only on the person that took it. Does it have side effects? Yes, probably, and some people have come out and said it. And there's a YouTube channel here that I'll recommend, Dr. John Campbell. Uh, in 2020 and 2021, he was supportive of the jab. Now, after at least the United Kingdom and also Germany have started to bring out public information on the effects of the jab, He's looking at it from a critical perspective, okay? This, and he was not banned from YouTube because he is looking at things in a very, in a very mature way, okay? The best information that they had at the time was that, as a medical physician, he was not the one developing the, he, whatever he had access to, he was recommending. He has access to different information right now, he's presenting those also. That's why I like this guy. Yeah, he's an elderly person, and I think that's also part of why he will have the courage to say, okay, here's the other side of the issue. Maybe we want to look at this also, and maybe we want to look at other perspectives. Check out Dr. John Campbell's YouTube channel for medical advice. When it comes to the philosophical answer, first of all, I loved Archer Love's answer because... You know, on a short term with somebody that you're not so interested in, maybe it's not worth wavering your personal beliefs for. Totally, that would totally fit the, the answer when it comes to so many other things. Not just, did you take the jab or did you not take the jab? Okay, so totally same uh, pertinent answer. In the long term, is it somebody that you truly love and truly want to build a life with or share your life with, basically. I think that's a much more balanced uh, answer. Okay, then you want to consider, do I love this person? What What is their health like? Because we got to say it also. If it's somebody that you're just meeting now 
and they're not in good health, but you are, it's probably going to, I mean, you're going to love the person on a spiritual level. You're going to appreciate them. Maybe you want to support them, but maybe you're not going to be, I don't know. That's, that is a very delicate question. I'll, I'll be honest. I have no idea if, let's take the spiritual daddy. I've been talking about this guy on the channel. Let's say that whatever, for whatever he smokes, like he smokes a lot. He eats fast food. I don't smoke. I don't eat fast food like once a few months. So I'm looking at, okay, he's probably going to look at me. The, this woman got the jab. Eh. I'm going to look at him. Oh, he smokes. He eats fast food. Eh. <laughs> I mean, there's, you gotta, you gotta take a, I'll be honest here, whenever we find people that we are attracted to, they are also mirrors for us and we are mirrors for them, okay? They're going to have stuff that we don't like, we're going to have stuff that they don't like. That's the tough, nasty part, you know, tough love, okay? <laughs> That's what I call a tough love or a tough attraction here. So um, you are going to consider, okay, but okay, so this person is hot, is attractive, but am I going to get into a relationship with them? They're going to think the same about me. Uh, this woman, she got the whatever. Am I going to be in a relationship with her? That's a totally valid... Um, how do I say? Uh, what's the word? Not reticence. Man, I don't have my words with me today. So that's a totally valid concern to have. And totally valid question to ask yourself. You know? And take a step back and look. Uh, well, what am I doing here? Okay? It's totally valid. When somebody that you love, your life partner, gets in a medical condition, that's also, that's a rough life situation. You know, you don't, you never know because illness, when it comes, it brings a lot, a lot of challenges. And yes, it can affect intimate lives a lot. Health is sexy. Illness, it's not. Health is bringing you more mood and more drive for intimacy, brings more happiness, you know, well-being, health. Illness takes away from that. You don't have the energy. And yeah, when people get into illnesses, I don't think you can judge anybody in that situation because those are really, really tough life situations. And when people also have kids and one of the parents gets sick and the other one, even rougher situations. So I would suspend all judgment when it comes to you know these cases so when it comes to a long-term relationship if you truly love the person and they got the jab and you didn't yeah i, I wouldn't let a jab or two jabs take you know make me go away from the person that i love i wouldn't personally there are many people that in my like i live in bucharest romania Many people married with kids and they actually had a discussion in, the, in their family. Their discussion was, okay, we have a young child. At least one of the parents needs to be able to go into all the facilities, medical facilities, in case our kids have any problems. So one of the parents took the jab in order to have access to the... Yeah, that's what it went down to. If you didn't have the jab, you couldn't enter... You couldn't get medical care. So those, those are really, really rough times. And that's why I don't judge people based on their decisions. Because the entire context, it was poorly managed. I'll be the first one to say there was a lot of uh, fear cultivated. There was a lot of uh, judgment, you know, aggression from one side to the other. Totally not helpful of having a clear head and making really the best decisions for yourself. Totally. Like the, the psychological and emotional component of how this whole situation was handled. I'm the biggest uh, critic of that. What I also want to look at is contagion. Why? Because some of the uh, spiritual seekers fear that and I'm, I'm going to share some names that I've heard when it comes to the people that got the jab. Um, I've heard that we're not organic anymore. I've heard that we're mutants. 
I've heard that uh, we were booby traps and because our code was rewritten, uh, some other entities could walk in our vehicle, our body. Um, when I heard those statements, obviously I was well, like, I was triggered. I didn't take it in a very positive way. And I went for help to other people that were spiritual seekers themselves from my country. And I went with the exact, the words that I gave you right now. And all of them, all of them said like this, look, I think this is an exaggeration. I think this is going too far. And aside from the um, medical uh, concerns that those are a reality, okay? Dr. Jan John Campbell's YouTube channel, check that one out. I don't think we should start playing with stuff that we haven't seen proof of yet, okay? So I haven't seen, I for one have never seen somebody to be, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, okay? I've heard of exorcisms and all of that. I didn't have it. So not before the jab, not after the jab, I don't freaking know. Um, do I acknowledge that there is some really dark stuff out there? Yes, I did the video with the sexual shadow. There is a lot of twisted and perverted stuff and, and destructive stuff that we do to one another sexually. So from where I stand, the, the shadow is there. Am I going to stay away from people that got the jab or not? That's not going to be my criteria. My criteria, for instance, is going to be, okay, how do these people view the world? How do these people view intimacy? Where are they headed in their lives? How understanding are they of my, the nature of my work, the nature of my spiritual beliefs? I don't force people to walk the same path that I'm walking on. What I need is for people to be understanding. And also, I'm going to look at, am I understanding of their path? Can I be supportive of their path? And can I walk, share my life with them without being negatively impacted? Because I think that's what it goes down to. Can I sustain life with a particular person? So without being negatively impacted. Because if I'm negatively impacted, I'm not going <laughs> to... No, I'm not going to do that. So just because somebody took the jab or not... Mm. Next, let's look at contagion. Okay, so the jab was not contagious. The, the bug, yes it was. People could take it. Okay, people took it a lot of times, repeatedly sometimes. I was lucky enough not to take it. Then again, it's no surprise because I avoided most of the big congregations, big events, high school reunion. I did not go to that because it was right during the fourth wave or something. Stayed away from that. I was like, I'm sorry people, but I'm not going, taking care of my health. I was not going into cafes and all of that. I was, my friends, I was meeting them in the park one or two at a time most. So, yeah, I did change my life a bit, but I wanted to really take care of myself and I didn't want to go through the complications. I just didn't. So that was my option. Did I judge the people that went? Because I had a lot of conversations with my friends. No, I didn't judge them. Did I judge the people that got the bug? No. Did I judge the people that went to work? while the pandemic was going on because they were forced by their employers. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that discussion. That was a huge... I'm not going to judge them. No, they're still my friends. Did I interact intimately during the pandemic? No. I did go on several dates in... Was it 2020? 2020? 2021 also? Jeez, it's been so long I forgot. But did I engage intimately? Mm, yeah, I stayed away from that. If it was somebody that I had been in love with, I probably would have. But otherwise, you know, casual stuff, no. Nope. Am I going to judge people who do live their lives as they choose to? Absolutely not. So, coming back to contagion. Physically, the vaccine was not contagious. The mental approach, the psychological approach to it, the definitions... The emotional approach to it, was it contagious? Yes, it was. Okay, part of the negative uh, environment 
that was built. It was people who judged, both sides were judging one another. Uh, the ones that got the jab were calling the, the other ones killers or criminals and ignorance and whatever. The ones that didn't get the jab called those manipulated people of... They, people of Satan or something. A lot of stuff. Okay, also mutants, booby traps, whatever. The stuff that I've heard recently. I don't believe in that. I don't think we're helping one another at all. When it comes to answering the question, I'll be very simple about it. How do you feel? Like, what is this person's health, their take on life, one? And how do you feel about that? And secondly, how do you feel in this person's presence? Whether they got the jab or not, whether you got the jab or not. Those are the things that matter. And we don't know what's going to happen in the future. What other health mass health issues we're going to have and what other uh, restrictions we're going to have and so on. So we don't know. One thing that I do know is that our mental health and, and balance and equilibrium, we need it. We need to be balanced, grounded in order to make the best decisions possible and in order to help as much as we can. Because I believe we're here to also support one another. I dislike people who judge, who are sadists, who are cruel to others, who are, you know, punching in the knife in somebody's wound all over again. I don't like that approach. I'll definitely be critical of that approach every time. That's not helpful to anybody. And we need to learn. We're, we're billions of people on the planet, seven, eight billions now. What the heck? Are we thinking, you know, how are we going to help each other if we start to, it's, we're a lot of people here, we need to learn emotional, psychological and emotional um, cleansing ourselves and psychological and emotional support one, of one another. We are people, all of us, we are souls. I think that's what spirituality should be about. And even if we're not a believer in the spiritual path, man, you're, if you can't help others, just maybe stay away from them. If you're negatively impacted by others, steer yourself in a different direction and that's it. It's not your job to be a spiritual justice warrior, whatever. It's not, honestly. Do you want to share information? Do you want to help people be grounded? Sure. Just... I would refrain from the negative emotional and, and psychological component of it. Because when we fuel the kind of tension that I've seen from a lot of people, we actually allow more bad decisions to take place. Okay, When we're in distress, we're not seeing things clearly. We're not balancing our emotions. Our capacity to decide is diminished drastically. So for any spiritual seekers that I have out here, decide for yourself from a balanced place, sure. Help others get more grounded or at least don't make things worse for them. That's how I view it. Share information with them, sure. If somebody comes to you to ask for your opinion, sure, share it. Don't, don't judge them automatically. Especially somebody who's in a delicate situation or somebody who's facing illness or something like that you're not going to help them. Or somebody who has a child that is sick or another family member and you start to point the finger, yeah, of course they are because of this, this and that. Dude, that's, that's spiritual involvement or involution. You're not going to help. Please be aware of that. So that's my take on it. Otherwise, what do I encourage all lovers out there, beloveds and lovers, First of all, keep your space clean, your inner space clean, psychologically and emotionally. I am also a human resource for that, so I have practices on Patreon, totally accessible from a financial stance. When it comes to sexuality, I have other programs, resources, okay, videos that you keep for life. Check those out. Use them for the best. I can also do coaching, so I'm here to help people if it falls in my... Um, area of expertise, because if it doesn't, I'm not going to start to mess around with stuff that I'm not trained in. And what I'm also going to encourage all 
beloveds and lovers out there, watch your health. And if you can support others when they're in in a bad shape, you know, health-wise, do that absolutely. I find that is the best way to live life. If you can, if you have the resources, the time, the, the you know, the energy to do that, because if you don't, there's a... Uh, a principle that I've heard when I was a non-medical volunteer for the emergency service in Bucharest uh, and we were all told about the safety of the savior okay we were learning first aid maneuvers but everybody was told absolutely everybody if you are not able to offer the first aid maneuver in a way in a, in a safe way for yourself do not offer the maneuvers there is a simple answer for this. Instead of turning a situation with a victim and a potential savior into a good situation, you're turning the situation where there's a victim and there's you, the potential savior, in a tragedy. Because if you can't do your work properly, safely, you're going to become a victim yourself. So don't add to the number of victims. Totally, like... I know that in psychology we hear about the Eric Byrne triangle... Um, abuser or aggressor, victim and savior, in the grounded term, they've actually come, there's, okay, the situation, the dangerous situation or somebody that inflicted pain, there's the victim and then there's a savior. There is a way to navigate this. You can help the victim as long as you are safe. If you help the victim but you are not safe, you're turning that into a tragedy. Don't do it. It seems cruel, but from a grounded perspective, it makes sense. Okay, so totally love the emergency service for rewiring my view on the dramatic triangle. I'm, and I totally share that wherever I can. It's like, yeah, you can save somebody or help somebody save them, uh, save themselves, but as long as you are in, you know, secure conditions. Otherwise, no. Okay, in a spiritual term, I think this is what I'm discovering with the um, rebirthing breathwork training. You learn to center yourself and you learn to own your own space and you can still hold space for others, but as long as you're not affected. So, and that's, and you can do that with inner work, inner cleansing of yourself and remembering that you are here, whatever people, you know, whatever stories that they go through, whatever stuff that they tell themselves, whatever programs or situations that they perpetuate knowingly or unknowingly, when they are ready to get out of those situations, they will ask for help and you can share the information. When they are ready to actually take and use the information to save themselves, they will take it and use it themselves. So you don't judge them, you just show up in the way that you're centered, hold space for them gradually in episodes, whatever, until they will rise themselves out of that situation. It does happen. And that is the healthy way to navigate the dramatic triangle. Okay? And you're not a savior, you're an inspiration basically. You're not in a spiritual sense. Okay? In the physical sense, you help as long as you're capable to do so. When you're not, you stay away from that. That's so I find that also valid in intimate relationships. I find that whenever you're engaging with somebody, yeah, intimacy is really potent and you can take you can take on things from one another. Intimacy is really it's opening up the space to so much more than just the physical encounter for those that are conscious of sexual energy. So you're clearly very very discerning of the people that you choose how you interact, when you take a pause, a break, when you, you know, wait a day or two until things are cool and settled. Those are stuff that many people that do not walk the spiritual path and do not take the time to work on themselves. It sounds weird. It sounds like uh, old-fashioned and so on. It's not. But when you get to the place where you understand this, yeah, you're going to, you're going to, change your perspective so do I encourage people to you know what to do how to handle based on the jab situation 
I would say take your time and really discern what is important to you. And then also take the time to know the other person. It might turn out to be the love of your life or it might turn out not to be. So don't decide like right that on the spot. This is not a sim simple question to answer. And please understand also that the answer, it's not something that somebody else can give you. Can they help you view things a bit differently? Sure. Can they help you grow like Archer Love? He shares his philosophical views on a lot of topics. Then there are other people like the teacher that I have for the Rebirthing Breathwork certification. She's helping us get more centered, obviously. And then learn to hold space for others because we're going to be facilitators after a few years, if you ask me. It takes a bit of time to integrate and, and grow in your capacity to hold space. So we're going to hold space for others and help them get centered. And yeah, it's a process that takes time. And not every spiritual seeker can do that also. A lot of us are just seekers. Some of us are teachers. Some of us transition from seekers to facilitators or teachers. But that is a process also. We can all choose what level we're on, how we want to use our, our skills, our capacities, our level of understanding, and so on. So, yeah, uh, maybe you want to watch this again <laughs> in case I wasn't clear enough. I don't have a simple answer. I do have the answer, work on yourself, sit with yourself until you get the best answer in a specific situation, case by case. So uh, that's it. I will look forward to meeting you in Patreon, the daily practices, and in my other programs. And I'm building also a program, Intimacy, Confidence, and Skill. That one is a different approach from the stuff that I already have in the dojo. And I'll see you with other videos here. Bye.